Yeah, so what rizinkizumab is, it's a monoclonal antibody directed against a protein called P19. And this P19 protein is part of the IL or interleukin-23 receptor. Turns out that interleukin-23 is an important uh, messenger in the whole inflammatory pathway. We've learned that the what we call TH17 or T helper 17 pathway is important in chronic inflammation of the bowel. And then by blocking um, IL-23, you actually shut down a lot of that TH17 pathway. And so, uh, and, and just as an example, like in Crohn's disease, patients with Crohn's disease can have a mutation on IL-23 that's actually protective against the development of, of Crohn's disease. So um, it's clearly important in IBD, and it turns out it's also important in ulcerative colitis. Yeah, so it, it, the, the drug worked in both an anti or an advanced therapy, um, naive and an advanced therapy exposed population. So the clinical endpoints uh, of, of clinical remission, which is basically a, a global endpoint of symptoms and endoscopy, that was the primary endpoint that was met in both the induction and in the maintenance study. And then Specifically, the endoscopic endpoint was met. And then there were other secondary endpoints combining endoscopy and histology um, showing that those were, were met as well. And again, in both that anti-advanced uh, therapy, naive, and uh, exposed populations. Another novel endpoint that was studied that was positive was in, in the maintenance study, they could actually show um, a decrease in the number of um, ulcerative colitis-related hospitalizations during the course of the study compared to the placebo group. You know, overall, this is a pretty safe uh, class of medications. There are no boxed warnings. Um, you know, you do have to, there, it's recommended in the prescribing information to at least check the hepatic biochemistries at least once after starting the drug because there is a small percentage of people who might bump their LFTs, but really overall pretty well tolerated. Very few um, infusion reactions or injection site reactions. And so overall, uh, I mean, that's one of the, I think, nice features of this drug is that there's just not a lot of baggage with it in terms of safety or having to check things. Yeah, so I think that makes it, um, you know, it is the, it's the first um, anti-IL-23 that's approved for both indications. Um, so um, in a complex world, uh, e even providers like to have simple uh, algorithms. So this might be a simple one. You say, okay, I know this one is approved for both. And so you might be more likely to use it. I, I think it, you know, it adds another option for patients. Um you know, it, it can be used in both that advanced therapy, naive and exposed population. It's a pretty safe drug. So it, it's really, um, I think it, it's going to appeal to a, a broad number of patients. You know, there have been a few interesting developments. I don't know, you may have seen there was a basic science paper uh, sort of uh, two or three weeks ago suggesting that there may be a new mechanism of action in Crohn's disease that we didn't appreciate. And so um, whether or not um, we can develop drugs that target, you know, take advantage of that new mechanism of action will be interesting. Um, there are a class of medications called the anti-TL1As that are being developed, but it's still early. It's still going to, they're, they're years off from, you know, commercial availability at this point, just because the phase three trials are just getting underway. So um, that's exciting. And I mean, still we need, we need like a predictive biomarker because with all of these treatment options now, how do we pick which drug goes first? And right now we pick based on clinical profiles, it'd be nice to be able to pick based on actual biomarker or a molecular profile. We don't have that yet.